Hi, it's Kevin Lebates here and another video on the Ethereum merge because it's coming up in a week so presumably excitement is mounting. Now in the previous video I talked a bit about what is involved in setting up a node and staking Ether on a network and I gave an example of the Gurley test network. So the Ether for that has no monetary value because test nets can be turned off at any moment and at that point all the Ether that you have will magically disappear. And that's exactly what happened to the Robston test network recently when the test nets moved on to the Ethereum 2 version. Anyway, back to the Ethereum mainnet. Actually, no, not quite back to the Ethereum mainnet yet. Uh, one of the things I noticed about the Gurley testnet was that there are about 322,000 staking nodes out there for that testnet. And that's really high because on the Robston test network, there were typically about five to 10 miners. And I found uh, when I ran my miner that I was discovering a block and getting a block reward about once a minute. So I made a healthy income in Ropston Ether, although when I say income, it had no value, so I guess it doesn't really count as income. But on the Gurley test network in Ethereum 2.0, uh, my calculations are that I expect to find a block about once every two months. So that's a very, very big difference. Now on the Ethereum mainnet, there are currently about 420,000 stakers and 420,000 nodes. And that means that about 13 million ETH, 14 million ETH are locked up in the staking contract, which uh, amounts to approximately $20 billion. That's a pretty hefty sum. And it's over 10% of the ether that currently exists. Now, in another previous video, I was talking about a trick that token projects can use in order to artificially inflate the value of their token. And it is predicated on the economic law of supply and demand, which is if you reduce the supply and the demand stays the same, then the price of the asset will increase. And this is a trick that token projects pull through two means. One is to burn tokens which if the uh, project owners have a lot of tokens in reserve and they can make a public show of the fact that they've reduced the supply and that can artificially boost demand and hence the value of the token actually it doesn't boost the demand it just means that there are the same number of people chasing less of the asset and the other thing that token projects do is they introduce staking they introduce a contract where you can deposit your token and then over time you accumulate more kind of interest and the project owners typically do this by holding a lot of tokens in reserve and then handing them out through the staking contract and the effect of this is the same it pulls tokens out of circulation and that reduces the supply and as long as the demand stays the same or even goes up the price of the token will go up too. So, in a sense, the Ethereum devs and the Ethereum project managers have managed to pull the same stunt on Ethereum by getting people to lock up over 10% of the existing Ethers that are out there. That should have a knock-on effect on the price of Ether. And it's probably already factored into the market price, as you see on the uh, exchanges and marketplaces. But they've managed to do so in a very clever way because they have a justification for this staking, namely the move from proof of work to proof of stake. And the justification for that move is because proof of work is environmentally damaging. You'll see lots of articles telling you that you know proof of work miners are consuming the equivalent of the energy of Poland or Saudi Arabia or some country like that. Uh, and a proof of stake doesn't consume that kind of energy and therefore it would be better if we could move to it. Now, I'm not going to go into the pros and cons of proof of work versus proof of stake in this video. That gets very complicated very quickly. But it's interesting to note that the uh, Ethereum group have managed to create a staking contract and get people to commit 10% of the assets out there into it through this move. And that can only be beneficial to people who are holding a lot of Ether, which presumably is the people who started the project off in the first place. They tend to be the whales in this space.
And another interesting thing is that you can't withdraw your stake at the moment. So there is a plan on the roadmap that at some point in the future, you can take your staked Ether, which is called Ether 2, and withdraw it. But at the moment, once you've staked your Ether, it's staked for good. It's stuck there. And the reasoning behind this is that it's a complicated thing that they are doing with the Ethereum merge. It's a bit like trying to change the tire on a car while it's driving down the motorway. It does look from the test networks that they are actually going to pull it off. I can't see any major flaws in what I've run with the test network software, but uh, only time will tell. And uh, there may be hackers sitting in the wings who have found vulnerabilities and they're just waiting for the merge to happen before they pounce. I guess we'll see. Again, I would hope that the markets have taken that possibility into account. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so not only have they got people to stake, but they have got people to stake in a manner that means that they can't unstake. So in a sense, locally speaking, it's permanently locked away. They've permanently, um, as far as marketplaces are concerned, because markets don't tend to look very far ahead, they've permanently managed to reduce the supply of Ether. So uh, just a thing to keep in mind when you consider this, there's a whole lot of issues surrounding these kind of activities. And this stuff isn't trivial because as I said, $20 billion worth of assets are locked up in this staking contract. I hope they had it very well audited because that must be a prime target for hackers. Anyway, again, further ramblings on the Ethereum merge. They have to be ramblings because really we're only gonna see what truly will happen once the merge happens and some time passes and everything settles down a bit. But I imagine I'm going to have material for several more videos on this in time to come. I hope you found this one interesting and I'll see you in the next video soon. Bye for now.